Hi guys, today a switch light from eBay of course and it's faulty. I tried it out beforehand and the console just gave me some magic smoke when I just put it into the charger. That's our console. Let's check if the port is okay. Oh, 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 okay. That's why I got magic smoke. Before pushing it in, I should have looked into the port. What a mistake. That's when you fast just want to check some eBay items because sometimes they are just fine. So you bought something faulty and there is nothing nothing wrong with it. So I just checked them beforehand and yeah, I plugged it in and yeah, so that's why I received magic smoke. Okay, let's see what's happened in the inside, but yeah, obviously we have to change this port without any doubt. So, and um, the listing just says that the console won't charge or turn on and what I've paid, I will put it now on the screen. Wow, that's filthy. Whoo, have a look at all that dust. Mmm, yummy. Hopefully this one isn't water damaged, otherwise I will just get mad. You know what I'd do? i get mad. That would be bad. Let's just remove the speaker. It's important just to get to the to this portion not the whole port otherwise you will rip it whoops fell down good job Marcus and I recommend having a tweezer with some ripples on it for better grip okay let's clean up the thermal paste just with a wipe and some alcohol or better known as IPA good so let's have a look under the microscope I think the port is factory yeah I think that's factory I can't see any flux or something okay let's go on on this side battery connector Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connector. Water damage sticker, that's fine, there is no water damage. Otherwise, this thing would turn pink. Hmm. At first glance, it's just dirty, but no obvious damage but I'm pretty sure that some ships are damaged by the shortcut it was an evil smell after playing in the connector Okay, this side looks fine. Let's check this side. Start from the connector again. Here are our main chips, so to say. Or not main chips, but our charging chip. And yeah, I see that also handles some kind of charging. But um, yeah, those are some suspects that could be damaged this one and this one but at first glance no obvious damage so we'll check for shorts in a moment if you are looking for the p13 usb chip that's not uh, in this switch light because that's not dockable so there's no need of this chip. 
so yeah, the rest looks fine. Yeah, let's probe around. Let's first check what about those two... Yeah, those two ICs. Meter in diet mode. Okay, red probe on ground. I will use the USB-C port as ground. And let's check. So, and if you're not familiar, in diet mode, one side will give a short beep called as the voltage drop and the other side is just connected directly to ground and this side will beep. So we'll have add those, those are capacitors, those brown ones. We'll have one side, one beep you can hear and this side continuous. So that's the way I check this around. If I have on both sides a continuous beep, I know there's something wrong. Well, first land, that looks fine. How about this one here? Oh. And here... We can hear something... That's not right. Yeah, okay, that's directly connected with to the BQ chip. That's for the power management. So that would make perfectly sense. So, but before doing this, let's remove this sucker here because there is no other way that I can test it without another USB-C board. So let's try... Let me first just clean it a bit up. I have laying around replacement connectors for the normal switch. So the doggable version, not the light version. They will fit. The, the other ones has a, have the lip here, so we need to, yeah, fight it down or something. I will show you later on what it's looked like. So, but first, let's see how to remove this port fast and without any damage. And if you know my channel a little bit, you can now guess what I will do now. I will take some low melt solder and put it on this port just to lower the temperature that we need to remove this sucker. So let's do that. So let's put some flux on those joints. So the flux just helps to get a better flow of the Lomet solder to mix it up with the unleaded one. So there is one problem, when we now would go with our hot air gun and try to remove this from above, we will melt this battery connector. So what I will do now is do it from, from the bottom side, let me switch it around that you can see, from the bottom side there is no plastic part or something, so we can heat it up and remove it from from this perspective, we won't damage our plastic battery connector. So keep that in mind. If you want to remove something and there is a plastic connector right beside, just have a look on the other side. Maybe you can go this route. Yeah, I will go with 400 degrees. And I will heat it now from the bottom side. the battery connector is still intact. Okay, let's first remove the low melt solder. First let's put on new fresh flux for this. Remember, flux is always helping us out. And yes, let me have a look. Okay, here's still our uh, water damage sticker. Let's remove this. Maybe we can put it back later. I think I will just ruin it during this process now. Okay, move this out of the way. Let's try. And due to the Lomat Cell Drill, it's really relatively easy to remove the holes 
because the temperature doesn't need to be that high. Yeah, you can see it's hard to remove the solder from those points here. Just let me grab my heat gun again, put it over it. Clean up the hole completely. Yeah, I think that's clean. So, but now on this side we have again the problem with our battery connector to do it the same style. Let's try it the same style, but just let me use my heat gun again from the down part of the board. I think that should work fine. Let's see. So, putting this here. Grabbing the heat. Yeah, this doesn't work out. As I was just hoping. Maybe it is free. Let's quickly clean this area a little bit up from from this yeah flux and stuff. Yeah, thing that this is just flux sitting in here, so it should be fine. Okay, I think this looks good. Let's grab another USB-C port, fresh from the box. And there you can see the lip I was talking about. Let's have a look inside. The pins look fine. Let's now wet those contacts that it will make a better connection with the board. Okay. That looks good. Let's try to fit the port. Good. So flux is already on. Let's try to solder it. Put the hot air station at 400 degrees. And we will warm it up from the bottom side. First far away and then getting nearer. And then we wait until our solder joints are changing the color or getting more liquid. We will see that in a moment. Here we go. Dropping the connector. Giving pressure from above. And I'm just holding, holding down. A little bit more. Let it go and let's check if we got solid pins. Solid. 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 <laughs> Not solid. Not solid. Solid. Hmm. The issue with this is that I'm not 100% sure if the console or if the pins, the underlying pins, so you know the connector got here a row and we have here a row, which we can't see. And yeah, I hope that the connection is established. Let me touch all pins again with a soldering iron and yeah, then we will see. Solid. 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 
Solid. Solid. Solid. Solid. And solid. Let me clean up those pads. Let's have a look from an angle. See the connection look fine so far. Let's turn. Clean this side. Now let's fill in those holes with solar to anchor those. Shiny little joys. I just went up with the heat a bit for a good looking joint. Okay, clean again. Quick check if I ripped something. It's always a good idea to check the edges when you just put it into a board holder. It's not, it wouldn't be the first time that I just ripped a component just by holding it with a wrong holder or wrong position or whatever. Otherwise, you do more harm than fixing stuff. That's not the idea, obviously. I think that looks all good. Those here want the ship with a short. So this line was shorted. Let's again try. I'm turning off the horrible fume extractor. So, red probe on ground, Ooh, well, meter and diamond, of course, red probe on ground, and B, continuous B, so we have a short here. Let's check the coil, should be the same story. Yeah, that's obviously not right. So now, what could be wrong? Multiple failure points, it could be the chip, it could be this component, I think it's maybe an inductor. Um, it could be this coil, it could be this diet. So let's first remove the chip. I think the chance that the chip is just blown is higher than with those components. But let's see. First, let's try to remove it. Fumix director back on. Hot air station, 400 degrees. Let's see. Okay, chip removed. Let's measure again. Diet mode. And we still have a short. Not cool. So let's try this component. Yeah, and the diet here, why not? Yeah, why not this coil? And the chart is Gun. Now the question is, which component was it? Let me get back in the coil. Okay. And again. Fine. Ah, Marcus, come on. I think the easier way is just to measure the component itself. Yeah, smart approach. So, this one... Gives us nothing, so I assume that this one is fine. 
So my suspect is this diet here. Yeah, let me get this dude in. Okay, let's flip this diet. And measure. Again in diet mode, obviously. Okay. Short in this direction. So that means when we flip it, we shouldn't hear a beep. And we don't. Now I'm confused. Have I overseen something? Oh, wait a moment. Have I just blown away a component here? Yeah. Let me have a look. Well, yeah, I have a capacitor here laying around. Oh. No, come on. So this component is maybe faulty? No, it's not. What the heck is going on? Okay, that is pretty weird. <laughs> okay, let me put in this guy. So the diet was fine. Yeah, let's first remove this one again. And let me prep the pads with some leaded solder. Okay, let's clean it up. Okay, that's not pretty, isn't it? We'll see how we can do it later on. And now I need to clean up this. Yeah, let's first check again for shorts. Diet mode again. And... No. if this behavior is okay to be honest and check if I have a different board laying around here I do have what's obviously totally okay here are the chips gone so I broke them <laughs> um, let's see what this will give us for reading So that's a really that's the same behavior I would say. Yeah. So the whole thing was just not necessary. Yeah, that's great. Good whatever. Post-processing markers here. Unfortunately, I have not checked the direct effect of resoldering the flown away capacitor. I believe that the whole confusion was partly caused by this mistake. So be careful, those things will happen very unexpectedly and very fast. So maybe the ship wasn't faulty? Oh, who knows. But I will put a fresh, fresh ship on, just to be sure. Here I have a bag with the BQ24193, that's the one we need. To be honest, those are, well, I'm not sure if they are all fresh, but yeah. let's check them out. Yeah, I think I bought, I bought them and they were just desolded somewhere, so yeah. it's not perfect, but yeah, hey. Okay, let's first prep the pets. I will not remove the old solar completely, I would just mix it up with leaded one.
And you know what? No. We will remove it completely. That's... I don't like that. So let me pump up my iron to full heat. That's 430C. Smaller soluic. And it's very important when you do this to have enough heat, otherwise, you will get stuck like, like me here for a moment. You will eventually you rip some pets or something. That would be worst case scenario, of course. And short clean. And again, flux and put some fresh leaded sole on these joints. Remember, much is helping much in this case. Oh yeah, and go down with the temperature of my of my iron to yeah, 3.30 in this case, but this highly depends on your soldering iron, so you have to test by yourself. And you see, it's not much room here to work with. We got a connection. More flux. Maybe more heat. Yeah. Let's go with more heat. I think I mixed it up with some unleaded. Oh, that's way too much solder in the middle. But we will fix that in a moment. So, this connection here is okay because it's just one patch. Same story here, those two are connected, those two are connected, and those two are connected. So, yeah, let me just remove a bit from the middle. Okay, okay, okay. Clean. Okay, I think that looks not that shady. Um, what is the right position? Okay, there is our indicator and our dot is the left upside edge, so theoretically it should be like this. Let's heat it. Now, uh, before we will heat it, we will put some fresh, fresh flux. Can't stress that enough. That's it, fine. Wait a moment. Press down. Let it go. And after touching the edges, I think we are good to go. Maybe this one here, this again, and the rest looks good. Okay. Ah, you can see there is a little spot. That looks connected. Not sure if it really is. Yeah, could be. Okay. Nah. Go away. I think we just brushed it away. Okay. Think that looks all fine. 
check again our connections here. I think it's a little in a bit. Yeah, that's just some flux, but there is no bridging. Okay, now yeah, I think we are fine for a short test. So I think we need a battery. Let's see if I do have another battery. Yes, I have another battery, but that's also in the case still. Let's measure this battery here and see if there is some voltage in. And there is... Hmm. Nothing. Maybe I should check my spare switch. Mm hmm. How about this one here? Okay, here we got yeah 3.4, but I think that's a better chance than zero. Okay, so let's try it out. Let's connect it. Let's see what it's giving us. It's giving us 15 volts. I think that this is fine. So that looks familiar to me. The 0.65. Open four seven, and let me quickly check what I'll, what my other fast charge fast charger is saying. And yeah, I just checked it. That's going from twelve volts to nine volts, and that should be right. So hmm, maybe this one is fixed. Good. Okay, so let's put it back together. But I will clean it first a little bit and to get rid of those scratches we could try to take a little approach of sandpaper so I do have 1200 sandpaper so it's very fine yeah we need some coarser sandpaper for this and finish it off with this one here. So here I have got some coarser one, it's 180. So there's a little tiny spot. We'll use a tiny drop of distilled water in this cap here. And we use our fine grit sandpaper. I think that's a pretty good outcome. Much better than before. What do you think? There are slightly some more scratches, but I don't want to go too deep. I think that's fine. Let's put back our water damage sticker or indicator, more to say. Yeah, and we haven't checked the battery yet, doesn't we? So let's have a look if the completely empty battery will receive a charge. Mm, that doesn't look so healthy. I think we need to change that battery. So let's see how I can remove it. Yeah, let's try to use just IPA. We have a bottle with IPA. It looks like Windex or something, but no, it is IPA. Post-processing markers here. Do not copy what you see. You will soon find out why this spray model method was a totally bad idea. Back to unsuspecting markers. Trying to banding it from one side to another to loosen it up. Mm -hmm. Let's get in more IPA. Loosen up our adhesive. Oh, that's really hard to remove. Sure, there are better ways to do this, but yeah. Holy moly. You need to be careful not to bend those batteries too far, otherwise, they could catch fire. Where is this coming from? What the heck? Okay, I hope that I haven't damaged the PCB. Okay, now the other battery. 
not sure if I have damaged something. Can't see a crack at the moment. Yeah, hopefully it works. Okay, we're going to our donor board. You know what? Let's this time use a adhesive remover based on acetone. So I will put some gloves on and some protective gear from my eyes. And got this left over from my MacBook battery repack action. Let's try it. So putting something here and here. I think that more is enough. Hey, post-processing dude again. This is the right method. With help of this fine tip, we have much more control over the amount of adhesive remover and what is even more important, we are in control where exactly the liquid is getting applied. This will become a key feature in the next minutes. Let's try to work it in a bit, let it slip under the battery and then we start prying again. Okay, and here is our adhesive. So switching back to our main console. The good thing is that it's still sticky. So we can perfectly just use it. Hmm. I think it's more enough together just to have a look if it's, you know, at least turning on or charging. Just try this. Not to put this wooden cable in, and then connecting power. I think it's always a good idea to get all connections in, and then. Thing. This is connected. Okay, let me count off the power. And. Bingo! Yes! We fixed it! Yeah, brilliant! Huh? Oh, damn it. And I got IPA under the screen. Damn it! Yeah, that's ruined it. So guys, sorry, but we can't get further. At least not without a new screen. But I think it's interesting that the console is working again. And sound is working as well. That's working fine. Okay, there's no card, obviously. Yeah, I think I have to get a new screen for this device. So I think this will be a revisit. Summary time. Thank you very much for your precious time and watching till the end. Could we fix it? Partly. With a little more care while removing the battery, we probably could have a complete fix. At least the mainboard is not damaged and the rest looks very promising. I just bought a new LCD and waiting for its arrival. If you like seeing me failing or sometimes succeeding, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. This will help me a lot with growing this tiny channel. Have a heart for broken devices and give them a second chance. Hope to see you soon, stay healthy and until next time, bye!